in this episode. For beginners, F number or aperture is one of the most significant settings in photography, be it general photography or daily photography. The values of F numbers are like F 2.8, F 3.5, F 4, F 5.6 and it can go up to F 22, 32 or sometimes even 60. If the F number is on the higher side, the aperture opening will be smaller, thereby the beam thickness will be narrower. F number is directly proportional to depth of field, meaning when F number is smaller, the depth of field is shallower and when the F number is higher, the depth of field is deeper. Every lens has a minimum F number and a maximum F number also and this is written on the lens. Generally, lenses with a lesser or a smaller F number are considered more superior. The 50mm f1.2 lens is going to be really well performing even in low lighting situations which is one of the most common challenges in photography. You also need to understand that you cannot compare a 50mm lens with a 100mm lens and vice versa. This comparison will only hold true if you are comparing three 50mm lenses. F number or aperture controls the image brightness. A zoom lens means a lens having two focal lengths that is a minimum focal length and a maximum focal length and of course all the focal lengths in between. For example, the 1855 lens. You're listening to the Dental Photography School podcast where I'll be sharing practical tips on clinical and general photography. I'm Dr. Mayur Dauda and I've been coaching dentists and dermatologists on clinical photography since 2013. In this episode, we'll try and understand the meaning of F number or aperture. For beginners, F number or aperture is one of the most significant settings in photography, be it general photography or dental photography. F number or aperture is a function of the lens, but it is controlled via the camera. So what does F number or aperture actually mean? Aperture or F number is a hole inside the lens. In the past, this setting was also controlled through the lens. The values of F numbers are like F 2.8, F 3.5, F 4, F 5.6 and it can go up to F 22, 32 or sometimes even 60. So what is the meaning of these numbers? These numbers basically indicate the diameter of the aperture opening inside the lens. When I say f2.8, the hole inside the lens, that's the aperture, is a bigger hole. As compared to f of 5.6, obviously, if the hole is bigger, the thickness of the beam of light that passes through the lens and hits the camera sensor will be thicker if the hole is bigger. However, if the F number is on the higher side, the aperture opening will be smaller, thereby the beam thickness will be narrower. Thus, F number or aperture controls the image brightness. In order to make it simple, F number is inversely proportional to image brightness. What does this mean? When the F number is smaller, the image is brighter. However, when the F number is higher, the image brightness is lower. Or I can also say the image is darker. But like shutter speed and ISO, 
F number also controls one more thing in addition to the image brightness, which is actually the key factor to understand F number or aperture. So, what is the second thing that F number or aperture controls? F number controls the depth of field. Let us try and understand what is the meaning of depth of field. Let us say I am taking a picture of the teeth in maximum intercuspation position. The patient is having cheek retractors on both the sides and I can see all the upper as well as the lower teeth right from the incisors to the molars. Right? When a small area of my image is sharp, it is called as a shallow depth of field. However, when the area that is sharp is pretty broad, is called as a deeper depth of field. Let us try an example to exactly understand the situation. If I am taking the maximum intercuspation position shot and the area from the central incisors till the canine is only sharp, that means it is an image with a shallow depth of field. However, if I am taking the same MIP shot and the entire area from the central incisors till the third molars, everything is sharp, then it is called as an image with a deeper depth of field. Please try to note this down. Depth of field is always deep or shallow. It is not more or less. So, how does F number relate to the depth of field? F number is directly proportional to depth of field. Meaning, when F number is smaller, the depth of field is shallower. And when the F number is higher, the depth of field is deeper. Let me give you a practical example to understand this. If I take the MIP shot at F of 2.8, the depth of field will be shallow as compared to if I take the same shot at F22, when the depth of field will be really deep. Now let us dig deeper into the subject. Every lens has a minimum F number and a maximum F number also and this is written on the lens. Generally, lenses with a lesser or a smaller F number are considered more superior. Let me give you another example to understand this. Almost every company makes a 50mm lens. Let us say Canon's 50mm lens. It comes in three variants. One is f1.8, one is 50mm f1.8, the second one is 50mm f1.4 and the third one is 50mm f1.2. So all the three lenses are 50mm lenses but their lowest f number is different. In the first one, it was 1.8. In the second one, it was 1.4. And in the third one, it was 1.2. So, which is the most superior or the best lens? It is the 50mm f1.2. Now, why is that considered more superior is because as compared to 1.8, 1.4 and 1.2, the widest aperture opening will be at 1.2. Now, when f can go down to f1.2 in the 50mm lens, the beam of light entering the camera sensor will be more thicker. Thereby, the 50mm f1.2 lens is going to be really well performing even in low lighting situations, which is one of the most common challenges in photography. So, these lenses are some of the best lenses to have. Basically, what I'm trying to say is any lens, say 50mm lens or 100mm lens, if the F number is on the lower side, those lenses are superior lenses. You also need to understand that you cannot compare a 50mm lens with a 100mm lens and vice versa. This comparison will only hold true if you are comparing three 50mm lenses. Means you have to compare the lenses with the same focal length. Only then you can compare the f numbers with each other. For example, I can compare 50mm f1.8, f1.4 and 50mm 
f1.2 which are three lenses i cannot compare the performance of 50mm f1.8 with 100mm f2.8 that would be an unfair comparison because both the lens are completely different lenses one is a 50mm lens and one is a 100mm lens so don't get me wrong you can compare a lens's performance provided the focal length of the lens is the same now the example that i gave you was that of a prime lens which means a lens with a single focal length now what about zoom lenses let us try and first understand what's the meaning of a zoom lens a zoom lens means a lens having two focal lengths that is a minimum focal length and a maximum focal length and of course all the focal lengths in between for example the 1855 lens it has a minimum that is an 18 and the maximum that is 55 but it also of course has 18 24 35 and 55 so what happens in these lenses what is their minimum f number this is also written on the lens and when you see an 1855 lens you will be able to see that it has 1855 f 3.5-5.6 written on it now what is the meaning of this particular thing it means that when the lens focal length is adjusted to 18 its f number can come down to as much as f 3.5 however at a focal length of 55 it cannot go down to f 3.5 it can go down only till f 5.6 maybe you can try this at home do one thing keep your 1855 lens on 18 mm focal length and put your f number on f 3.5 now don't change the f number just rotate the focal length ring and shift it to 55 mm focal length and check what is the f number it will automatically become f 5.6 this means at 18 mm focal length in the 1855 lens the f number can go down to f 3.5 however the same lens is not capable of reproducing f3.5 at a focal length of 55. If you want to understand zoom lenses more in detail, you can refer to our previous or older podcasts on lenses. Now, even zoom lenses could have a minimum and a maximum f number which could also be constant. Let me give you an example. Let us say I have a lens that is a 100-400 mm lens, but I have two lenses. One of them is a 100-400 f4-5.6, meaning at 100 mm focal length it can go down to f4. However, at 400 mm it can go down only till f5.6. There is another variant, however, of the 100-400 lens, which is the 100-400 f4 lens. What is the meaning of this? It means irrespective if I use the lens at 100 mm focal length or 400 mm focal length, the minimum f value can still remain constant to f4. These zoom lenses where the f number remains constant, the minimum f number remains constant irrespective of what the focal length is are superior quality zoom lenses and they perform much better in low lighting conditions as well now let us try and understand how to change the f number in the manual mode of the camera what are the buttons to change the f number or the aperture value on the camera in most of the basic cameras uh, by canon we have a button called av button on the back side of the camera so you have to press and hold the AV button and rotate the main dial simultaneously and you will be able to see that the F number changes on the manual mode. In Nikon basic cameras you have an aperture button which is typically on the top part of the body of the camera on the right hand side. You have to press and hold the aperture value button and rotate the main dial simultaneously and you will be able to appreciate that the f number does change however in most of the high-end cameras you usually have 
two main dials. One of the main dials controls the F number and the other main dial controls the shutter speed. So you don't have to press any accessory button. You can just rotate the main dial and you will be able to appreciate that the F number changes if you have a high-end camera with two main dials. So what is the best F number now? That would be your question. The best F number would depend upon how much depth of field you want in your pictures. As a general rule for outdoor photography in portraits and food photography, many photographers like to keep their F number less because they love to get a blurring of the background. However, in general photography, we want exactly the opposite of general photography. In dental photography, we keep F numbers on the higher side so that we can get a deeper depth of field. Generally, for full face pictures, I keep an F of F11. And for intraoral photography, I keep an F of F22. If you have any questions on F number or aperture, do write to me on info at dentalphotographyschool.in. If you like these podcasts, please think about subscribing to them so that you get automatically notified when I release a new episode. That's all we have time for in this episode. If you are getting benefited from my tips, do show your love by leaving a rating and a review. For tutorials on photography, do check out my channel Dental Photography School on YouTube. To participate in contests and live events, join the Dental Photography School Facebook and Telegram group. You can follow me on Instagram as Mayur underscore EOS Maestro or Dental Photography School. I'll meet you next week. Till then, keep listening, keep sharing.